The Iron Man heads up display is one of the coolest video facts that you can make in DaVinci Resolve. So you know what that means? I'm gonna show you how to make it in four steps. So all that stuff coming up. But first, if you're new here, my name is Billy Ripka and I make weekly DaVinci Resolve tutorials about different effects, transitions, and workflows that'll help you become a better editor. So if you wanna level up your editing skills, click the subscribe button and the bell notification to stay up to date on the newest videos put out. But let's get into it. So to set up this shot, all I did was place a black bed sheet on a few light stands. Then I had my camera placed relatively close to my face. Next I had to act and clearly I'm not a good actor. So it took me like 30 different tries. And finally, I used a light to splash light from under my chin up into my face when I wanted this HUD effect to turn on. Also, if you're interested in a light panel like this, check the link in the description. This thing's like super cheap on Amazon for like 50 bucks and it's fully RGB and it's amazing. So now that we got that out of the way, let's move into the editing process. All right, so now that we're in DaVinci Resolve, we're gonna go ahead and start making this Iron Man effect. So once you have all the footage in DaVinci Resolve, just go ahead and drag down the footage and cut it down to the section that you want this effect to happen at. Then cut your clip down and put it in the timeline. Then right click on your clip and go to new fusion clip. Then you're gonna jump into fusion. That just sounds like such a cool name, like fusion. So I've broken this effect up into four different steps. The first step is gonna to be to create that helmet feel. So to make that happen, we first have to track my face right here. So we're gonna hit control and space and then add in the tracker node right here. So with the tracker node selected, grab this little tracking area right here and center it on my face. And then you just wanna expand it to where it's about as big as my face, make sure it's centered, then go into operations right here and then under the operation drop down menu, go to match move. Then go back to tracker and hit track forward. And now you can see DaVinci Resolve is just gonna go ahead and track my face forward. I mean, I track that. Frick, I said that. All right, so once Resolve is done tracking, we're gonna go ahead and add in a merge node right after this tracker. So just click the merge node right there and it's gonna add it in for you. Then above this merge node, grab a transform node right here and just drag it in and grab the output of this transform right here and connect it to the blue triangle. Make sure it's the blue triangle. That's the alpha channel. Then above this transform node, go ahead and just grab the polygon mask and drag it in and connect it to the yellow triangle right here. Make sure it's the yellow triangle. Then just go ahead and trace around my face. It doesn't have to be perfect. Then once you fully mask around my face, go ahead and grab this background node and connect it to this merge node right here. The masterpiece is complete. Clearly I'm kidding. So click on your polygon one mask, go over to invert, and now you wanna invert it like that. And then under soft edge, just bring it up a little and under border width, go ahead and bring it up more to where you can kind of see like the beginning of my hair and a little of my neck, but not much. You just kind of want to play around with it to see what works. So I think right here looks pretty good. Now, so the mask actually stays with my face, click on the transform node, right click under center, go to connect to under tracker one, go to unsteady position. And now it's just gonna track the mask to my face and it's gonna look Fantastic. And then I'm just gonna box this whole thing up in an underlay because organization. All right, so step one is complete. So step two is the 3D camera tracker. So hit control space again and type in camera tracker and just go ahead and add that into our node graph. Then with camera tracker one selected, go to preview auto track locations in the inspector tab. And then under detection threshold, just bring it down a little because we don't really have too much information right here. So by lowering the detection threshold, Resolve is able to find more tracking points. Then after that, just go ahead and hit auto track and Resolve is gonna do all the tracking for you. Once it's done tracking, go to solve and now you can see we have 90 tracking points. So obviously 90 tracking points is not a lot, but I'm just gonna go to maximum track error anyway and bring it down ever so slightly. I just wanna pretty much delete all of the tracking points that are not great. So I'll bring it down to like 14 or something like that. And you can see in the selected tracks right here that there's 10 out of 90 selected. Go ahead and hit delete. You're gone, you don't need them anymore. And then click solve. Yeah, so you can see that our average solve error right here is 1.3955. That's not great. Ideally, I wanna be under one, but because there's not that much information on this clip to actually track, that should be fine. Now go to the export tab right here and under 3D scene transformation, click this aligned drop down menu right here and go to unaligned. Then in the center of my face, I'm just gonna highlight a few points just like this because that's where I want the Iron Man heads up display to kind of stick to. I want it to stick to my face. From there, 
go to origin and then hit set from selection. Then under this drop down menu, go back to aligned and hit export. And now you're gonna see all these nodes just pop out of nowhere. Immediately, get rid of the ground plane and the point cloud. No one likes them. Hit delete on those bad girls. Then you can also get rid of your camera tracker right here. Then disconnect this merge from the media out like that and connect your media out to your camera track renderer. All right, step two, done. Now step three is where the fun part starts to happen. We're gonna start adding in the Iron Man assets. So just drag your assets in from the media pool and to actually connect a normal 2D object to a 3D composition, because right here, this stuff is all 3D. You can't just connect it like that, it doesn't work. You need this thing right here called an image plane 3D. This just gives you the ability to put 2D objects in 3D space. So I'm just gonna connect this circle hologram thing with the image plane 3D right here, and then grab the image plane and bring it down to the merge 3D. And now you see it's kind of in the center of my face. So before we scale it up, we just need to get rid of the black right here. So under image plane, go to blend mode, and under software, it's on additive. Go to screen, you can see nothing changes. And that's because for some reason under our camera tracker renderer right here, you click on that, we have to change the renderer type from OpenGL renderer to software renderer. And then you can see it allows us to get rid of the alpha channel. So now we wanna position this hologram thing where it should be. So I'm gonna close my media pool and then I'm gonna open up my dual viewer right here and then put my merge 3D node in the left viewer by clicking on this little button right here. So now you can see that it is in 3D space. That's kind of cool, right? This is just another way to kind of like view what's going on. So with our image plane selected, go to transform and we can scale it up a lot like that. And if we need it more, we can just type in like, you know, 10 or something like that. And, uh, and clearly that's a little too big. So I'm just gonna move it down to like eight, you know, something like that. Now in our 3D window, I'm just gonna grab the red arrow, which is ultimately our X. And I'm just gonna move it over and then I'm gonna rotate it using the Y just like this. So now you just wanna play with your different parameters in your image plane using your X, Y, and even your Z to just kind of like position it correctly. Then once you get this graphic the way you want it, you have to retime it so everything starts at once. So you can see that the light on my face starts at frame 21. So with this circle asset right here selected, go to global in and out and just drag it up to 21. This is just saying at frame 21, this graphic right here will start. Once you have your object positioned the way you want it, add another, add 10 more, Do, go crazy. You're just gonna go about adding these heads up display effects the same exact way I just showed you. And you can also connect an unlimited amount of nodes to this merge node 3D. So once you're done with all that, we're gonna move on to step four, which is ultimately finishing work. So right now we're just gonna keep it relatively simple for our glow. So we're just gonna hit control and space and then add in soft glow. We're gonna add our glow in before the image plane right here. So you just kind of drag it in. So now you see that it glows a little. So you can just move it around by dragging the gain down bring the threshold up if you really want to. And then once you get the glow to your liking, you click on it and you hit control C and then add it in for every single element. Now everything kind of has a glow and obviously we can tweak it if we need to because some of it is intense. Then we're gonna drop the opacity of each of these image planes right here just because we want to be able to see through it a little. So under image plane, go to material right here and just drop the opacity just a little so you can kind of see through it and then do that for every single element. So what we're gonna do is make these elements appear a little smoother than what they are because right now they're just kind of popping up over like one to two frames and that's super fast. So to make that smoother, we're gonna go to like frame 19 or something like that and click on our image plane and then under blend mode, drop the gain down all the way to zero and add a keyframe. So for every single one of these image planes, just keep doing that over and over and over again and make sure you're just not playing with your playhead because you want it to all happen at the same time. So now we're gonna move ahead four frames and you're gonna see that a light pops up on my face. Then we're gonna bring the gain up for each one of these image planes and it's gonna create a keyframe automatically. And then after that, you can just go to the spline tab and make sure all these image plane 3Ds are selected. Hit fit to zoom. And then you can just highlight both keyframes and hit S. That just smooths out the keyframes a little more. And if this whole animation still happens too fast, you can just highlight one of your keyframes hold shift and just make the animation a little longer. Now we're gonna create a mask around my eyes right here because in the actual Iron Man effect, there's always this kind of glow around his eyes. So what we're gonna do is click on our media in one, which is our main clip, and we're gonna hit copy and then paste it right here. Then we're just gonna add a second merge node right after this one. Now connect your media in one to the merge node 
and then add a polygon mask to it. Now just trace around my eyes a little like this. Doesn't have to be super perfect because we're just gonna feather the heck out of it. Now add a color corrector node in right after this media in one. So now if I just jack the color up to something crazy, you'll see that it's just isolating my eyes. Now we're gonna have to make sure that this mask stays right here. So disconnect this polygon mask, drag in a transform node right there and take the polygon output and bring it to the transform two input. Then just grab the transform two output and connect it back to media in one. Now under the polygon two, you can just soften the edges a lot. So it's not so hardcore play with the border width a little. Bring the color intensity down a little because that blue right there is a lot. And then also you're going to want to jack up the gain a little. You see how it kind of adds that glow around your eyes. You want that. That's exactly what we want because now it looks like I'm actually having some screens hitting my face. And of course, just play around with all these settings, make it work for your image. And then when you finally get your color the way you want it, you're going to want the light on your eyes to appear when you're having these elements turn on. So just move back a few frames to like frame 16 or something like that. Click on this merge node right here and then under blend, bring it all the way down and add a keyframe. Now just move forward a few frames to where things start to turn on like that and bring the blend all the way back up. And now you can see that the light appears around your eyes when all these things pop up. So now if you want to add more colors to the face, you can just go ahead and do that same exact method. Now the last thing to do is to grab a transform node and add it in all the way at the end like this and bring the size up, recenter and reframe it as is. You want to make it feel close as if you're really watching somebody who's in a helmet. All right, so there you have it, the Iron Man heads up display effect in DaVinci Resolve. If you thought this video was helpful, give it a like and also share with your friends so that they can put this awesome effect in their videos. I got a question for you guys. Do you like Iron Man? If not, who's your favorite character? Let me know in the comments below. Mine actually is Iron Man or was Iron Man. Tony, no. So I also started a new thing. I started a Fiverr where I pretty much just edit YouTube videos. So if you want any YouTube video editing done, click the link in the description. I'll, it'll bring you to my Fiverr. You'll see the prices, all that stuff. And I'm kind of going a little cheap right now because I need some good reviews. Anyway, if you like me, hit the subscribe button. And if you really like me, hit that bell notification. That helps so much. But as usual, the video on the top is a video all about the 3D effect in DaVinci Resolve. And the video on the bottom is a video that YouTube thinks that you would like. But until the next one, peace.